Hey guys, Millsy here. I've been getting a lot of questions from all you guys wondering what type of equipment I use, how I record, what I edit with, what I live stream with, and it's probably because you guys are trying to make your own YouTube videos, maybe you're just trying to make some stuff with your buddies or something like that, but you want to get out there and do the best quality you can. It's ve it's quite expensive to get into this, especially if you don't know what you're doing, you go out buying capture cards that you don't know how to use, you go out doing all, getting all this other stuff you don't need, and then... Um, you end up spending heaps of money when you could have just gone this to begin with and it would have been a better option. So the first thing I'm starting off with is PC recording and what I use to capture that my gameplay with and that would be DxTory. So as you can tell from the title of the video. The reason why I use DxTory over something like Fraps, which is what I'm using to capture this actual video, is because Fraps is quite a pain in the ass to use. It's just kind of a dated software. Um, DxTory is a little well, a little like under known, un under, under well known, oh god, I'm screwing that up severely, but people don't know a lot about it, people haven't heard about it that much, it's starting to get out there a little more, but it's just so superior to Fraps, the reasons are it's a lot less of a strain on your PC, the processing power it takes to run Fraps is outrageous compared to DxTory. So you're going to get a better frame rate in game, you're going to get better quality video, you're going to be able to do things like capture your sound, capture sound devices and um, gameplay at the same time, which are things that Fraps used to not be able to do. They've done some updates recently which give you the ability to, you know, cut, make your videos longer into one big chunk and um, allow you to capture one, like, microphone device or something like that, which you would think makes them, like, even on the scale, but really there is no, like, competitor to DxTory because it's, from what I've found, the best software capturing device out there on the market today. The negatives for it, though, are it does cost a bit of money, it's hard to find a torrent for it, so you will probably want to pay for this software rather than trying to pirate it or something like that. I paid for it. It's like 60 yen, I think, or something. Maybe like 40 yen and it's like 60 New Zealand dollars. I can't really remember. I'll probably put that in the description, the actual price of it. Um, but it's worth the money, believe me. You can, or, or the other option is, I just said or three fucking times. Um, you can go out and purchase a capture card, like an NVIDIA capture card which will give you better quality again, but you're looking at like 200 bucks. My my money, New Zealand dollar. $200 New Zealand dollar for, to get like a good Ava Media capture card or something like that, which if you're on a budget, you're not really like making a lot of money off YouTube and making any money at all, you kind of can't really afford, or if you've got the big bucks, go out and get an Ava Media capture card because that's good for live streaming and stuff like that as well. Um, the other downsides to it are it doesn't capture the desktop, so right now I am using Fraps to capture desktop. So if you're going to be doing tutorials and things like that, you want to be using uh, a different device to capture your desktop. Because DxTory will only capture anything running an OpenGL or a um, DX, uh, DirectX output. It won't capture just desktop, it's got to be like DirectX. Which is fine if you're just capturing gameplay and nothing really else. It also capture, you know, enlarged screens and like from YouTube and stuff like that. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, but let's just get started into the tutorial because I've talked for way too long. But just just trust me, the software is good. So use this over Fraps. So the first tab here is like the video tab. It's nothing really. Just tick those boxes there. It'll just show you frame rate and um, stuff like that when you are got the game open and just just pause the video and, and copy that. The next tab is the capture folder tab so this is where your files will go once you've captured them so most computers have a C drive in them but you don't want to capture to your C drive because that's where you're going to be running your game from it's where everything's running, Windows, things like that so if you have a good desktop which has two hard drives in it capture to the other hard drive if you're running on a laptop um, you might want an external hard drive hell, if you're on a desktop you probably want an external hard drive so you can drop the, the hard drive into the program and then from there you just run a benchmark so the benchmark that I'm using right now is only giving me 27 megabytes a second or 26 megabytes a second. Now that's because that's my slow, like, 
one times USB hard drive. Um, as you can see, I've got another benchmark here, which is another hard drive there, which is benchmarked at 182. So you want at least plus 100 if you're going to be doing any 1080p videos. You want probably about 40 megabytes, maybe 50 megabytes if you want to do like 720. But plus 100, you're definitely going to want um, to do good quality 1080p. Um, because just how much the size of a file you're sending over is just going to be going really fast and it's really big. So you need a good speed. The other thing is that hard drive needs to be massive, so you need like a 2 terabyte hard drive. Like a 2 terabyte hard drive will give me an hour and 30 minutes of recording time. No joke. There is no way of changing that. That's the same thing for Fraps. Um, it's just a massive file size. Another really cool feature is you can have like multiple hard drives, so you can record to multiple hard drives. So you can record to like a couple dozen hard drives if you're really OCD <laughs> or something like that and you want to have backups. Um, I don't really do that. Um, there's some other things you can do where you can like put those files together or something like that, but that's just a cool feature if you want to have backups. So moving on to the next tab is hotkeys. So your hotkeys can be really anything you want. I don't really, ha you have all these options to select as hotkeys. I only ever use one, which is my video stop and start movie capture cut hotkey. So you can have that set as anything, F keys, I use the number pad plus key because you want to use a key that you don't use in your game very often and um, yeah, you don't want to be hitting it because you'll turn off your video and not realize. A cool thick thing is though once you have your um, counter up the top, your FPS counter up the top, you know when you're recording when you're not so you can always check that as well. But yeah, so I just put it as something mundane that you don't use in any of your games like number plus. So the next tab I'm going to be showing you guys is the video settings tab. So this is the good stuff. This is what you need to pay attention to. So we're going to start off with encoding. Excuse me. So encoding is you can download any encoder off the internet if you have a preference to an encoder. Or you can do research and select which encoder you want out of there. But to be honest, I just use DXTory encoder. It's perfectly fine. It gives me really good quality video. And if you start messing around with stuff like this, you don't really know what you're doing if, especially if you don't really know what you're doing and you can kind of it's just a lot more extra hassle to get like very mild quality video you can compare put like both videos beside each other and not notice any difference like unless you're really looking so it's just the story video encoders is where you want to go the next thing you can do is click the tab here and once you click that it drops down a format video so you can select true quality low quality high quality or medium quality now this is in case like your hard drive smaller or you want to record in a lower quality or you don't really have that hard drive to be able to keep up with it the file size is going to be smaller but the quality of the video is not going to be as ideal now when I say the quality of the video is not going to be as ideal it doesn't mean the quality of the video is going to be bad Low doesn't mean it's going to be garbage quality, it's still going to be perfectly fine quality to watch. Um, high quality is just a better version of that. Um, the other thing is a lot of people talk about compression. Um, I know Fraps compresses your videos, and I know people, uh, people like to click the uh, compression button here, but I don't really know why people tick it. Um, so I just don't tick it, I just don't think it's a good idea to compress your videos, I don't see why it would be a good idea. Um, but if you do press that, it's like 50% compression, and, um, yeah, I think it just makes your file smaller, and also, like, makes the quality of the video a little, a little less, um, as high. Um, the next thing is frame rate. So, frame rate, 30 frames a second is perfectly fine, because that's what YouTube records at, if you're uploading to YouTube. If you're uploading for any other reason, you can choose 60 or whatever else, or put a weird frame rate in there, like 45 if you want. Um, it's all up to you, but 30 frames is what YouTube uses, so that's what I use. The next thing is video output. So um, you have file output and direct show output. Direct show outputs for live streaming. So if you're going to be doing recording to a hard drive like I'm doing in this video tutorial, you want to use um, file output. Um, I'll be doing a live stream tutorial in another video if this one gets a lot of interest and things like that, and I'll go through show output for you guys. Um, about my live streaming setup as well. Um, the next thing's like clipping down here, that's not really important. Um, you'll notice that file format's been selected and I've selected AVI rather than raw cap, 
Raw caps if you want to do what I said before, and that's record to multiple hard drives. Um, if you want to do that, select raw cap. If you just want to record to one, select AVI. Um, options here include mouse cursor. Well, that's why I just have that ticked for some reason. That's not relevant. No, that's really important. Um, the thing down here also is scaling. So scaling is important. So this is the quality of your video. So you can do it by percentages or size. So I do it by size. So I just do 1920 by 1080 because that's my monitor. Um, I record in 1080p because I like to record in 1080p. Some people like to record in 720p because their internet's not as good and um, they, were, they don't want to upload all day. So that's understandable. So this is so you can downscale or upscale your videos. So to whatever quality you want. So you can do it by percentage, so 100%, or you can do it by um, scale, size, so 1080 or 720p. So the next tab is the audio tab. So this allows you to add multiple audio sources to your video. So if you're having, if you're, if you want to have like a commentary or something over top of your audio already, you can add another microphone. You can add multiple sources, um, multiple sounds. If you have like a high-end like audio card in your computer, you can add that as opposed to your standard speakers, something like that. And then you can also add multiple microphones over top. So if you and your friends are all playing a game together in the same room or something like that, you can add multiple microphones, um, which is awesome because what happens is once the video is rendered, it comes off as multiple audio streams, so tracks. So when you put it into Sony Vegas, you get your video, you get your in-game audio track, you get your microphone audio track, and then if you're, you've are you played for like 30 minutes and, and your microphone's been turned down the whole time and you didn't realize, you can actually just edit it so your audio is louder than the in-game track, which if you did that in fraps, you would be screwed because everything morphs into one audio track. Um, which is kind of a pain in the ass. Plus, it's all it gives you a lot more features and things to do when it comes to messing with your audio. You have different types of audio audio quality settings you can do. And, um, yeah, if you have lots of friends in a, in a room doing a podcast or something like that, you can um, turn up everyone's microphones down or up at the same time, which I think is a really cool feature. It's actually one of my favorite things about DX Tori. Um, also, there's a push-to-talk button option um, if you want. I don't use it. And you can turn the volume of the microphone up and down as well. But as you can see, you can have multiple um, audio sources in at one time. So this next tab, screenshots. The next tabs after this aren't too important. I don't really use screenshots. If you're interested in using screenshots, there's the formats. And it's just like um, the audio track where you can scale by percentage and size as well. Um, this is the advanced settings tab. So the only thing you need to really worry about here is the processing threads. So if you have like an 8-core computer like I do... Um, this is handy so you can like have your game running on a certain amount of cores and then have your recording software running on another certain amount of cores. Um, it doesn't really apply to somebody who's got like a two core or like a four, like a two core computer or something like that because you need all the processing power on, on your game as possible. But this allows you to have play with that so you can get a better quality and a better frame rate, rate while recording. Um, it's just a handy little thing which, um, can uh, improve the quality of your video. You could do this with fraps, but you'd have to go into like your task manager and a whole bunch of stuff like that, and it was real pain in the ass. This is a real easy tab. You can just change up and down on the fly whenever you want to, depending on the game and depending on um, what your computer's running like at the time. Um, so the next tab is going to be, it's just going to be global set settings. So um, this isn't really that important. Um, you can just mess with that if you want. Um, and the next tab is information, which I'm not going to show you because it's got all my information, like my account name and everything like that. So, yeah, this has been the DX Tori um, demonstration. At the end of this video, I'm going to show a little bit of gameplay from DX Tori with not much editing done to it at all, just to show you what the quality of the video is like at 720p. Um, but yeah, just trust me, this is a really great program. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to like, comment, subscribe down the bottom. Um, if you need any help just feel free to ask any questions um, I've pretty much told you everything I know but um, you can ask and I can give it a shot um, 
Or if you guys are interested in any of the software that I mentioned before, seeing a tutorial from that, just PM me and I'll get started on that as soon as possible. Thanks for watching guys, this has been Millsy. Make sure to subscribe again and drop any comments that you have. This has been Millsy, I'm out.